Myers for their refusal to testify about the firings of those nine U.S. attorneys while citing claims of executive privilege. Committee Chairman John Conyers saying the panel had nothing to lose by advancing those citations to the full House because it could not allow presidential aides to flaunt congressional authority. The last ones found guilty of criminal contempt of Congress it was a uh, EPA official who went to jail for three months in 1983. The White House, however, denying that any authority is being flaunted. We have a situation where there is an attempt to do something that's never been done in American history, which is to assail the concept of executive privilege, which hails back to the administration of George Washington, and in particular to use criminal contempt charges against the White House Chief of Staff and the White House Legal Counsel. It's interestingly enough, Nobody has cited or recited anything that they think they've been denied. Instead, there has been constantly, and it seems, a desire to provoke a confrontation. Before Senator Leahy refutes that particular point, let's turn to our correspondent in Washington, David Schuster. Good evening, David. Good evening, Keith. Bolton and Myers in a moment. First, flesh out this Gonzalez story and the development. The Attorney General testified under oath to the Senate yesterday about this 2004 briefing. It wasn't about the terrorist surveillance program. And there was already a memo in the speaker's file from the director of national intelligence saying it was? How much trouble is the attorney general in? This is a really, really big deal and a big problem for Gonzalez, Keith. I had been speaking with a legal expert earlier tonight and reading back the way that Gonzalez was facing the question from Schumer, the way he responded, the fact that he was given an opportunity to correct himself, and Gonzalez repeatedly said it was about other intelligence activities. But the fact that there's now documentary evidence, never mind the testimony of these members of Congress who were there, but documentary evidence that in fact this meeting was about was about the terrorist surveillance program or TSP and there you have Gonzalez flatly saying no it was not I mean the legal expert I spoke with tonight said that just based on the documentary evidence that might exist which we now know does exist this is a clear case of perjury and that it's not even close and so now the question is whether Democrats want to call for a special prosecutor and say look a U.S. attorney needs to bring this to a grand jury, seek an indictment. Of course, because Gonzalez is in charge of the Justice Department, he should not be. He should be, rec be recusing himself. But the question is, will Democrats demand a special prosecutor at this point? Now he can review his testimony. They give the uh, all witnesses the option to re uh, review and revise. But assuming that that doesn't happen, what there's, they, they must think, the administration must think under these circumstances that there's wiggle room here. They asked him this question umpteen times yesterday. Is there any idea what the out would be other than revising the testimony? Well, and tonight, uh, Gonzalez, a spokesman, is saying that he stands by his testimony that this was not about the terrorist surveillance program this March 2004 meeting. So the only thing that they could do now is they could, I suppose, suggest that this administration document was wrong, that uh, perhaps the document uh, misidentified what the meeting was about, but then you have a correction that stands in contrast with what members of Congress are saying, or the only thing that Gonzalez could then do, I suppose, is tomorrow he could say, you know what, I did make a mistake, I was thinking about another meeting, and, and here's my corrected testimony, but that makes the point for members of Congress who say that every time this guy testifies, he, he says something that's not true. I mean, this is this is a really big deal, according to legal experts. Or it, make, or it makes the other point, David, which is that there's another um, uh, surreptitious spying program that the that the, the attorney general thinks was discussed that day, which is a, an entirely different set of uh, oil cans catching fire. Yeah, that nobody else knows about because members of Congress say they haven't been briefed on any of that. So. All right. In the other, what was the lead story until about an hour ago, what specifically in the House are Mr. Bolton and Ms. Myers <laughs> being accused of? Because uh, Congressman Conyers put out this 52-page laundry list of possible offenses committed by the administration. You could argue that might be a little short. What part of it actually pertains to what they did not say? Well, the contempt citation is related to the White House with Myers and Bolton refusing to provide testimony and documents related to the firing of these federal prosecutors. As it stands, uh, lawmakers have already collected evidence in the Justice Department that suggests a high level of, of White House involvement in the firings, and that Bush advisor Karl Rove was among the first officials to suggest the firing. So Congress is convinced that Meyer's testimony could add to the level of detail and that the White House documents, which essentially are under the purview of the Chief of Staff Bolton, would also help provide a complete picture. However, just based on what Congress has been able to get so far, Congressman Conyers has found evidence that White House and Justice Department officials in firing the prosecutors violated federal statutes that protect civil service employees. And Congre Congress has also found evidence that suggests Justice Department and White House officials then sought to cover up what they had done by obstructing justice and giving false testimony and statements to Congress. And again, Democrats say that they need access to these White House documents.